to hide a friend? <laughs> to hide the fact that you don't have a friend? <laughs> we were still going to pretend a little bit that we were addressing those watching this on television for at least one more night. And those of you who watch and can watch for more than two eyes, of course, can tell that it doesn't matter whether we're apparently addressing this to the TV audience or not, other than the fact that we didn't start off doing it for television for random audiences, but now that we are, it does have its effect, whether I seem to pay any particular attention to you people out there or not. Connected to as strange as some of this seems, and I mentioned some of the letters that actually we get since this is being shown in many areas now, besides the ones of people just saying, which is a common idea, it's not just this taping in the audience circa 1992, but throughout history of people thinking they have some kind of interest in some extraordinary ideas. And then unless they become extraordinary in a sense of no consequence, such as people believing they're interested in extraordinary ideas, and then they become, let us say, UFOs, UFOlogists or whatever, or they become insanely re or extremely religious. They become members of some sort of cult. So if you do that, then you're all right. That is, you don't have to wonder what you're doing anymore. It's not just to attack them because of uh, religion. I just picked out UFO ufologists or whatever they are, uh, it's not that much difference between that and the ordinary mainstream of religious life on this planet. Because let us say anyone that right now is religious, just in the ordinary, sane, everyday sense, like many of you people's family and friends, they take religion, they say, seriously. Uh, in a sense, they originally started out being interested in revolutionary ideas. In a sense, trust me. Could have been for a split second, it could have been no longer than you know, two minutes after the first time, if they were male, that they ever saw a Playboy centerfold. <clears throat> that is, it has to do with the calendar based upon not the Julian idea or French fries or fresh cuts, but the harmonial, <laughs> the harmonial based calendar. <laughs> but let us just trust me for a second. Let us say that everyone now who is religious and the most mainstream acceptable sense. They started out for a split second somewhere being interested in it, these strange ideas such as this. But see, they're no longer strange if you would get into that, which has really, relatively speaking, almost nothing to do with your original idea. Do you follow? If you started out wanting to know, let's put it simply, uh, the secret of life. I want to know what is humanity about? Why am I here? Now, of course, you know after the fact, because all of you are after the fact. <laughs> well, all of you are grown. All of you have already seen Playboy and et cetera. And all of you recognize that you have hormones. All of you recognize at the ordinary level that you do not know what's going on. <laughs> but at one time, let us say, everyone who is now part of religion, their idea was, I want to know what's going on. But now notice, and those of you, I'm assuming, are good enough to listening to this even out on television land, in television land now, realize it's not an attack whatsoever on religion. Unless I finally admit the truth, there it is. <laughs> that, was, that was sort of a little inside joke between some of the people who write and me that say, you're not fooling me, it is an attack on religion. Every time you say it's not an attack on religion or politics, or my Uncle Fred. I know damn well it is. All right, so you called me. <laughs> Which is a whole other story. So think why somebody suspects. Sane enough to have a pen and paper and stationery and can find their way to the post office and mail a letter. Why they think that someone would stand and say, well, I was going to point out something and just using as an example, just using as an example religion or politics or weather forecasting or bus stations. And then to say, but now I want you to understand that what I'm about to say to use the example, it's symbolic, is in no way an attack on the Greyhound Corporation or the Catholic Church. And for somebody to write and say, aha, uh -huh, you're not fooling me, I know damn well it is. <laughs> now, which you can think, well, all right, somebody got caught up to some nefarious deed until you think, 
Well, if they are, why would they say they're not if it's going to seem that obvious? And if somebody just an ordinary soul can say, you didn't fool me, then what was the point? Of course, there's always a point because the person got to do another little step. And even people who live alone need to dance. That's why there is, although you don't know it, there is a hermit's version of uh, the Fred Astaire franchise chain. <laughs> They just don't call it that. <laughs> Instead of it being known as Fred Astaire Studios, it's known amongst the inner crowd, it, it, the chain is known as Lonesome. But. Some of the other letters, as I started to say, have to do with the fact of people, and would you try and take this symbolically because it has no great pertinence if you just simply leave it as being we're giving some kind of gossip about the kind of letters that people write from all over the country that see this. It has to do with how the nervous system works itself, is that people will also write probably the second most common letter other than the one I've used for an example of people saying, I'm very intrigued by this or parts of it and I find it interesting, but I'll tell you the truth, by and large, I've got no idea what you're talking about, and yet I keep watching. Well, as I was pointing out, one aspect of religion is, is you would start out that way, so I don't leave that hanging too much for a second. What I started to point out was, without it being an attack on religion, because it is serving a quite useful and valid purpose, but people start out, let us say everyone who is religious, people who are now part of a organized, conservative, mainstream, religious uh, institution in life. They start out for a split second somewhere wanting to know what's the meaning of life. Why am I here? What's going on? Now, I know religions, if you ask them, or in their printed material, they'll say that that's their purpose. But now all of you know this. They can say it's their purpose, but they can't follow through. Because you can't find a sane priest. You can't find a rabbi who can tie his shoes that's going to tell you that he knows the meaning of life. If he does, he's not part of the mainstream. He's got to be part of what is normally referred to as a cult, some faction, because the mainstream is going to say, well, no, we don't know what's going on. So notice, a person starts out, and their idea, their motivation seems to be that I want to know something extraordinary. I want to know what's the meaning of life. But now if there's any organized, solid, respectable, institution, organization, operation on this planet that does not claim to know, what are they? Churches, religions, the very things that you think that you sought out to give you the answer. Do you follow? The more mainstream it is, which it should be, <clears throat> which all religion, that which is stable and survives from generation to generation, is what I mean by the mainstream, no matter what particular religion it is. The more that they are part of life's major healthy institutions, the less likely you're going to find. They are not, institutionally speaking, of course, much less an individual, but institutionally speaking, they will not even give the illusion that they know what's going on. You catch the beauty of it. You catch the justice of it. You start out, you're a little nipper somewhere, and you think, I don't know what's going on. I don't mind. I hope I get rich. I hope I get famous. I hope I get laid as much as I want. But you know what I'd really like? I believe I would like to be able to this one place. I'd like to know what's going on. So you look around and you find out that you know, Amway, Amco dealers, <laughs> Hardee's, Burger Doodle. I mean, you can check with them, even a college, and you say, I want to know what's the meaning of life. And everyone will eventually assume that you're fairly sane and they're fairly sane just an ordinary sense, where are they going to direct you to? Well, son, you need to go down to the synagogue. You need to go to church. Well, that's, that's an interesting. I used to think that when I was a kid. I wondered, and I'd like to encourage you, but you need to go to a religion. And so everyone, sane, in the ordinary sense, ends up there. And yet, if there's one place that is sane and says reasonably and sanely, publicly, that they do not know what's going on, now, they have, you know, a story for it. Like, we're just God's representatives, and there's a, it really gets into faith. But the point is, they will say, no. You know, son, if you want to know the answer to life, if you think it's some kind of little secret, you know, uh, 
first let me tell you, you're in the wrong place because we're not going to lie to you, not us, the church. Now, if you insist on this, you're going to end up in the hands of some kind of madman. You're going to end up you know, on some kind of cult farm somewhere where they say that you got some old guy with a green beard and wearing overalls backwards and smoking dope or something. He's going to say, yeah, God talks to me. I know the secret. It's a good thing you came here, kid. And the kindly old priest or rabbi will say, you know, I hate to see that happen to you because that is not the job of religion, not the real religion, not the religion of God or Allah. And so you end up there if you're sane. Do you follow the justice of it? You end up in the place. I don't mean that the guy out there in his overalls and eating mushrooms and cow dung knows what's going on. <laughs> but they say they do. And so from one view, you'd think, well, now, if you really want to know something secret and something like the secret of life, it, you know, you ought to end up there. You end up in the place that says, no, oh, no, we don't know. You know, come right in. I don't. We don't know. And you end up thinking, well, finally, I, I'm home. <laughs> All right. Assuming that you people do not take the position that, wait a minute, don't say you're not knocking religion because you just did. Let's assume you got past that. Now, one more time, not to talk about this kind of activity to death, but you understand, contrary to that, why... If there is something else, which I keep insinuating there is, well, I'm telling you there is. And it's not me and you and this show, but it's this aspect of life that I'm calling the revolution. It's kind of, in a sense, abstract to go by what the man wrote to us tonight, but I'd have to deal with the word abstract. They're just not a good word and call it the abstract revolution as opposed to just the neural revolution because it is localized in your nervous system. But in the sense that there is some other possibility, then note, vis-a-vis -vis what we just, you all laughed and agreed that you've got some glimpse of the fact, we'll assume sans any hostility toward religion or anything else, that you end up in a place that denies that they know what you want to know, and very shortly, just almost immediately, well, most people, you feel, what a relief. You feel like, well, I'm home. I'm now where I was looking for, that is, a place that doesn't know what I want to know. <laughs> and so you end up there. All right. But you can identify the church. Everyone who's sane realizes what religion is, whether they're religious themselves or an atheist. If they're educated and just walking around intelligent nowadays, you know what religion is. So, but now notice what we just identified in a certain way. It serves other purposes. But notice one thing it does is give a home for those who want to know something extraordinary, and the home is, we don't know. <laughs> and if you're, you know, if they're pushed, they say, and those who say they do, don't. Because they're some kind of, they're cults, they're idiots, they're insane. And it's good that you came to us first. Because we are pillars of the community. We go back thousands of years. We're respected. We're tax exempt. <laughs> well, which is proof positive. And they say, you're home. And you do feel like, well, what a relief. But the relief is, I wanted to know what was going on. And here's the one place it says, we don't know. Welcome. And you go, God, what a boon, what a stroke of luck that I found you. All right. Compared to that, you understand the difficulty in trying to make sense out of this kind of stuff. Not just my words, but if there is, if it does represent something extraordinary that's always on the fringes, and if you're better than flat land, two-dimensional thinking, it's not just in the fringes, it's in the real heart, it's in the gut of life itself. Then you understand the difficulty in trying to pinpoint, well, what is this? But I was going to say, having that settled now, probably the most, second most common kind of letters, or one of the most common, so that you won't bet money on it. <laughs> it's people who will, unsolicited, since we don't ask people to write. All right, you can write if you send money. You does, that, does that make you feel better? I guess, maybe I should do that so that some of these people that happen to flick us on some cable don't get upset like, what in the God's name is this? And it just, some people get very upset. Maybe it would go down easier if I would just, maybe every five minutes during the show I just say, don't forget, which like some kind of phony baloney address, say, don't forget, send money quick or we'll be off the air. 
At any rate, I want you to consider this. Now, we're not laughing at people. And somebody says, wait a minute, you say we're not laughing at people. You're putting that same kind of crap when you say we're not laughing at religion when you actually are. You're about to laugh at people. Well, you caught me again. The second, or one of the more common, letters, remember, you haven't lost your place, have you? No. Uh, people who write, and remember, we're not solicited. I don't say write, tell me what you think. Or just write in and tell us, you know, how's your mama? And all that. <laughs> and so as people who watch this, and just suddenly from a foreign state, from another country, a letter comes in that nobody asked for. And so, all right, I don't mind writing. You're right. But a letter comes in, and somebody will say, well, I've seen your show. We pick it up here in Tacoma or wherever. And uh, I've been watching your show, and some of the ideas I find interesting, they almost always throw that in. That's why I let Kyra use that say, I find some of the ideas interesting. Of course, many times they also will say dash, because much of it agrees with what I've been thinking for years. <laughs> of course, it makes all of us here feel quite warm and running. <laughs> These letters, people remember now, unsolicited, just people write and say, you know, We've been watching, or I've been watching the show, and I find much of it interesting. And I've thought about some of it. And they'll go on sometimes for a paragraph or a page. And it, the point they're writing, though, is for them to tell me the following. That they find some of it interesting, and they'll compare some ideas they had, or they won't compare something they think they've heard on the show with some book they read. And they go through all of this, and I can always smell it coming. The punchline is, the reason they wrote, is for them to tell me that although they find some of it interesting, some of it even partially coincides with what they already know that they want me to know that they're not the kind of person that just blindly follows somebody else's ideas and they're way too smart to fall for any kind of just somebody's theory. Do you follow? Maybe I should have actually tried to quote one. They write to say that they like what, I, what they hear on the show at times but they don't want me for a minute to think that they're going to believe it. <laughs> the easiest way to put it is like the syndrome of people saying, uh, I'm too smart to fall for that. Whatever, whatever they want to point to, you know, atheists will point at religion, the institutions say, I'm too smart to fall for that. Religious people will say, well, I went to school, I studied some, I took a course in philosophy, I got away from the farm, I got around sophisticated, so-called sophisticated people. And I even toured with that. I, I, I went to a couple of meetings that when I was in college to the Atheist Club. <laughs> and I thought I was kind of smart ass for a while and smoked a little dope. But you know what? I'm going to tell you, I'm too smart to fall for the idea that there is no God. See, everybody, if put in a certain position, will say, well, I'm too smart to fall for so-and-so. Think about it. Yes, I'm too smart to fall for that. I have a certain paucity of passion to even put the punchline on it. <laughs> well, I guess I can give hints for those of you that hadn't put it together. It's like if you live at city abstract neural level you live by the railroad track and so to speak you have got your choice you can be the kind of person every time a train flies by let's say that you live in such a place that the train the tracks run east and west they can run north and south and you're the sort that says there are trains that go by here headed east got some of the damnedest slogans written on them Music comes out of it. People are shouting off the platform. <laughs> they don't fool me. I'm not going to fall for a train running east. Inescapably, there is the tacit admission, because it has to do with the limitations of energy, of being alive within a three-dimensional context, to say, I'm not going to fall for a train going east. There is no choice. You're saying, I have fallen for those going west. <laughs> now, I'm just using the word fallen for. Now, people ordinarily take it in a pejorative sense that, well, I'm not going to fall for uh, religion. 
because you're saying I've already fallen for being non-religious. But they are, even the part that goes unsaid is, I find some of it interesting. I don't understand it, and I want you to know. I'm too smart to fall for it. Part of the job of not falling for something, part of the job that religions and many other institutions, just religions being the obvious one, is one way we have mentioned in the past. If you notice many religions, at least those of you who are not religious, you can see it on TV the same way that you can pick this up and you don't have to comb your hair and brush your teeth and go out and have to put up with the other people. You can sit there and watch it. But you all know, even if you do or have been actually involved in religion, one of the many constant aspects in all religions is what can easily be referred to as busy work, busy plans. It is like a continual form of self-reference that they're always in the midst of a building fund. It's always in the midst of something going on that if indeed the original intent of those who ended up in religion was to find out they wanted to know what's the purpose of life or why am I here, what's humanity all about. In a sense, this is not, even this is not an attack for those of you that are really sharp at their own religion. But you understand, what if, what if what I am describing is a valid representation of the role that religion plays and the role it does not play? And what if suddenly religion all over the world, the people involved with it, all the good, decent people, your friends, your family, your kinfolks, suddenly realize, wait a minute, I, I started out and I came to a church or a synagogue or this religious organization on the basis that I wanted to know the secret of life. And I am no closer to knowing the secret of life the subject doesn't even come up. What the hell am I doing here? Why, not, why have I stuck with it 30 years? All right. This is not it. But notice, it is almost a form of distraction since everyone knows that's not it. That everybody involved knows that the church is not going to tell them what's going on that the people around the church do not know. So rather than you end up, and here you are back on a Saturday or Sunday or a Tuesday for the, what would be 30 times once a week, 52, for the 15,000th time, there you sit, you're no closer to knowing what was going on, rather than suddenly everybody in the congregation turn around and look at each other and going, hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> you're going to look at each other like, are we poster boys for idiots? Are we all fools for being here? In other words, instead of looking around and thinking, this whole thing is moot. And that, of course, is being polite, because some of them would probably say, this whole thing is BS. I'm wasting my whole life. We're doing nothing. Part of it is a kind of form of busy work. Is It's like, well, if we keep up a building fund, of course, all you care about is your lifetime, like for 50 years. But every time you find a religion, if the religion's been around 300 years, they have, guess what? They have a building fund. I know how old it'll be. Do you want to guess? <laughs> oh, all right. It'll, I'll give you the range. It'll be between, if it's a 300-year-old church or religion, it'll be somewhere between 299 and 300 years old that the building fund has been going on. It has to, in some form or the other. So do you understand, if we were very crude and just ordinary people, you'd say, well, that's kind of a form of distraction. And so that the people involved, you know, the poor congregational, this the followers, so that they won't realize that the people running it don't know what's going on. The people running it keep saying, well, we're going to tell you the secret any day now, but we've got to get a new church, a new wing to the church. <laughs> it's only ordinary people that say, yeah, boy, that's telling them. That's ain't telling anybody. See, because I put it the way the ordinary people would, the way they'd want to hear it. Were you listening? Did you catch it before we wrap it up? I said that an ordinary person could go listening to some of this and they could themselves say, aha, that's true. People running it don't know what's going on and so they try to fool all these followers and all these poor church people and the parishioners that give their good money and light their candles and pray so that they won't realize that the priest and everybody doesn't know what, don't know what's going on. They keep saying, well, we'll tell you what's going on any minute now as soon as we get a new church wing built. Do you follow it? No, no, no. The people running it don't know what's going on. But it's ordinary people say, yeah, that's the way to suck it to them. It's a trick. A duck, only Monday, in a Cairo, went quack, quack, ha, ha, the joke's on everybody. 
It's only ordinary people outside of some institution. In this case, some church will say, that's true. You just described it. They keep having to say, we've got to have new money for a wing. And the priests have to keep doing that and tap dance faster and faster. So what the parishioners won't ever say, look, I've been contributing money and coming here now for 20 years, and you've never told me the secret of life. And you keep saying every year, well, as soon as we get a new wing built, we'll, we'll build a little niche over there, and I'll get in it, and then I'll, I'll cut a hole there, and I'll put my face, and I'll tell you the secret. You keep saying that, and every time we build one wing, you say it's not big enough. You know, who are you trying to fool? I just told you. The duck told you. They're not trying to fool anybody. Nobody knows. That's why you have institutions. That's why you have collective thought. <laughs> Every time somebody thinks to themselves, much less say overtly or put in a letter, well, I'm not going to fall for that. They are falling for it. You got no choice. What they call falling for it is like, where am I going to stand? Well, it's according to where you live. Well, I live here. We'll stand there. <laughs> well, I don't like it, and I don't like you telling me to stand there. I don't need your permission. That's true. In fact, they say, I'm going to step right over here, and I'd like to see you do something about it. <laughs> it's like somebody telling life, hey, you don't push me around. <laughs> and if life could talk, life would say, we're extremely frightened by this threat. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say when we're out of state tonight, there is an absolute observable form of that kind of busy work that was standing ordinary people that would take it as being an attack on religion or any other organization, but especially religion seems to be the obvious one. It goes beyond that. If you get good enough to see it, and then you've got to truly turn your mind from external institutions into here, it goes beyond busy work, like let's collect money for a new building fund and keep doing that so that the institution never has to face up to the fact that we can't do, we can't fulfill our proclaimed, our ostensible aim. We can't do it, so therefore we'll keep doing something else. That is a valid observation, but it gets more subtle because it becomes busy thought, not busy work. Until whenever. Do I look sincere? Oh, and don't forget to send the money. We get a new wing, we can, the tapes will get better. <laughs> well, if you send them money, I'll take diction lessons. I'll get a, I'll get a haircut, and we'll get, we'll get a better group of people up here to, well, if not a better group, we'll get them better haircuts, and we'll just send the money in. You'll see. <laughs> Trust me, it'll be a lot better if you'll send in money. Lots of money. <laughs> Little bits and not, you know, you just got little bits, I guess sent to your local church or something, but we won't lodge. Is that, that, was that sincere enough? <laughs>